I am, I, I, I'm, uh, I tell you, I'm late to every party, and this royal baby thing has really uh, blindsided oh. me. I had no idea it was going to be this big a deal. Oh. It's enormous. Ah. Uh, it's all there is on television, ah. all of the networks, all of the cable things, every outlet, every uh, website, every blog, every podcast, every radio show. It's all about this the royal baby. Huge. And as, as I was trying to remind people last night, uh, these are, 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 are the oppressive thugs from whom we tried to break away. <laughs> And, and start oh, our own nation. That's all, and we did, and, and we did. Yeah. That's all and forgotten And we were more now. than successful. Of course, it's all and, water and under the, the bridge. The, the, no, no, the baby uh, the, could grow up to be an evil despotic that king won't baby. Happen. Could be an evil we're despot, this baby that right now that everybody is. Whoop-de-doo, whoop-de-doo. We whoop -de -doo. love the monarchy, we love the royals. And then, and then there's an office pool about the name, and of course, I had uh, Plaxico. No, yeah, didn't. <laughs> I make the worst choices. Should have been. Well, it should be Plexico. So here's what we've done. We uh, contacted CBS News in uh, London, and we said, uh, we want to get in on the bandwagon, and can you give us a guy? So ladies and gentlemen, live from the giant CBS satellite, which is uh, mostly used to monitor personal information about all of us American citizens. Yeah, of course. Well, we know that. Live now. from London, CBS News London correspondent Graham Fenwick-Jones, everybody. Turn on the thing. There he is. Uh, uh, nice to meet you, uh, Graham. Thank you very much for your time. I know you must be very busy over there. Well, uh, set the scene. What is it like out, outside of the hospital now that we've seen the baby? Well, David, it, it, it's, it's very quiet at the moment. Uh, you know, the, the people have, uh, have seen the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge emerge from the hospital this afternoon, somewhat knackered, chuffed a bit as they came down the apples and pears and down uh, a big toodle pit to the stonking crowd. Yeah. <laughs> I see. Um, and and any any information about a possible name? Well, Dave, you've heard all the codswell about William Arthur this or Charles Philip George that, but of course it's all sees for courses, isn't it? And it's all just a bit of rabbit and pork till we lay our mince pies on the official document. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's great. Right. <laughs> now, um, <laughs> in terms of royalty and title, what... What is the title of the baby? Well, officially, he's the Royal Prince of Cambridge. Oh, what was that? <laughs> what was that? What <laughs> well, yeah, the, uh, the, the Royal... Um, ah. Yes, well... You know, yes, <laughs> right. And in terms of the line of succession, where is he in the line of succession? Uh, third, yes. Um, third in line, so there are uh, two before him. <laughs> this guy... <laughs> And what, what about the Queen? Has she issued a statement of any kind? Uh, not, not yet, but she's clearly full of beans to have a lovely, jubbly sprog for the first time in Yonks. Eh? Ah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, Graham Fenwick Jones, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure, Dave. Thanks, Thanks for in London. Wow. That And hello, I was just reading this. I, I, I don't want to burden you people with our uh, difficulties here because uh, there's something called Time Warner. And all I know is they're the people that have the cable. And if you don't have the cable, then you don't get to see uh, CBS. And CBS is saying, uh, we, all we want is $2 a show. Now, that's not a lot of money. If you think about it, you're looking at a $2 show here. <laughs> This is it. This is a two-dollar show. That's what I have always and I'm felt telling about you, this show. Many nights, if I think things aren't going right, I'll split the price of the show with you. Oh, so okay. then, See, then it's only a dollar then show. Everyone wins. Everyone's yeah, yeah. a winner. Well, now Time Warner, the evil goons at Time Warner, say, no, no, that's not a two-dollar show. That's a seventy-five cent show. Well, so there, you see, that's no, the problem. No, that's how they get you. First of all, you shouldn't have to pay for television anyway. No. You show me in the Bible where God says. <laughs> Pay TV is the way to go. It's not there. Not, it's not there. No.
Well, it might be in a commentary somewhere, like there's some commentary well, it could be there, but it's not in the book. No, no, it's not, no. It, 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 but so I, I say, well, is there, we need some insight. So we contacted the CBS News today, and to help us now get a world perspective on this uh, Time Warner blackout. I, I mean, it's, what, what are we living in, China? What is this, Beijing? <laughs> We can't watch television the way we're intended as God's people to watch television. <laughs> so uh, we called CBS and uh, we decided to check in with their uh, world news correspondent, Graham Fenwick Jones uh, in London. Uh, Graham Fenwick Jones, turn on the thing. There he is right there. Good evening, Graham. Thank you for joining Thanks. us. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, what, can you tell us what the point of contention is now between CBS and Time Warner Cable? Well, Dave, it's all down to the moolah, the lettuce, uh -huh. the greenish, a pan, shillings and pens, which is why you can't see your vicar of Digley, yeah, your, your bootsy and snudge, your badger and dodger, your, your boohar and pick a boo. Uh, but once get past all the, the umply pumply and bubble and squeak, it should be a jolly right adjective. So, uh, Graham, what, what does this mean for Time Warner customers? Well, Dave, I, I, I don't watch much telly. I mean, I don't know my uh, Captain Pugwash from our Camberweed Grimm. But when you get right down to it, they're just a bunch of jack asses and tosses <laughs> playing noughts and crosses with their plonkers and their frappney bits. Uh, <laughs> um, how long do you think this is going to go? Well, yeah, it's, it's bad, Dave. It's like uh, the Doctor and the Dalek. We're all hoping to get our shoestring, our porridge, our handy pandy, all gas and gators and Billy Bunter and blankety blank. But as I'm telling everybody from Paddington to Piccadilly, I'll bet all the Queen's mum's baggers and mash, they'll have their crumpets in a row before Boxing Day. All right, thank you, Graham. That was very helpful. Graham. Oh, thank you, Dave. Graham. Oh, Graham. Chest, Graham. Oh, Graham Fenwick Jones, ladies and gentlemen. That's all you do. Thank you very much. That for everyone. Thank you, David. You know him, you love him. You, you never can't could. live without him. Never could, never Ladies will. Ladies and gentlemen, our good, good friend, uh, Paul Schaefer. You, Schaefer. Well, you know what? Uh, guess what? Uh, tonight, uh, NFL football, yeah. is it tonight? Yeah. yeah. It kicks off, and it'll be uh, my Denver Broncos against the, uh, thank you very much, <laughs> against the defending world champion, uh, Baltimore Ravens. Uh, ah. So that'll be the big game that tonight. Yeah. You know what? Uh, when we realized that it was uh, opening a night of uh, football, I said, let's get a hold of our uh, foreign correspondent, the guy that works for CBS, Graham Fedwick uh, Jones. Oh, Graham, yes. What's the guy's name? Graham Fenwick. Graham Fenwick. Graham Fenwick. Samuel Smith. Paul Samuel Smith. Got, one of, those, Smith. got yeah. one of those British names. Yeah. Uh, and he's uh, stationed in the, uh, the CBS Bureau in London. And let's talk to Graham Fenwick Jones oh. about uh, the impact of the NFL and the opening uh, game uh, around the world. That'll and, and in Europe. So turn on the CBS satellite, ladies and gentlemen. Say hello to Graham Fenwick Jones, our CBS chief uh, foreign correspondent, London, England. Uh, thank you, guys. Good evening. Uh, Graham, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you very much. We wanted just a couple of minutes of your evening uh, to tell us uh, about the NFL, how people uh, feel about it uh, over there in London, and who to you looks good coming out of the preseason? Well, Dave, every bloke from Leicester to Gloucester is chuffed to bits to see the bowlers and the batsmen break out of their snooker cues and their skittle balls and give a little how's that to the umps and the stumps and stumps and the umps and the wallies and the wallocks, the bobber job odds and sods. <laughs> See, now um, here in uh, New York, our Jets. Oh, what a soap opera! Sure. Now, is there is there any chance that they'll be able to turn things around? Oh, Dave, it's all a bit of a bugger <laughs> and a blast. <laughs> Well, I've been playing with a stool ball and tip cat and nipsy, giddy cat, one cat and piggy. I'd say it was a doddle. And within a fortnight, those balmy nuttles have to be tootle pit for their knobs and their ghoulies. Yeah, that's right. That's what I was telling Paul earlier. Yes, you were. 
Now that's interesting, but what about the Baltimore Ravens? They won it all last year. Do you think they'll be able to repeat to Graham? Well, well, they should take the wicked keeper's stance behind the stumps and give them the old wobbly pobbly, the squidgy and the whiffy, and, and that should get them uh, enough to stop faffing about and drop the cobblers. And once they do that, well, it's Bob's your uncle. Now scrump the cup and he'll be tickety boo from it switch to the dingle. Oh. Okay. okay. Well, I enjoyed it, and thank you so much for your insight to Graham Fenwick Jones, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, thank you, Dave. Aren't you the big girl's blouse? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much. Wow. Well, no, that clears up everything. I think it Gives does. It's a much clearer yeah. picture of Let's what's going Let's tee it up and here. go. Paul Schaefer, everyone. Well, Lee, on the vocal. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Yes. America's favorite mighty, mighty party in Mighty, my. Now, we were uh, talking about this uh, Syrian situation, and my position from the beginning was you gas your own people, you should be killed. That was my position. Yes. And it looked there for a minute like maybe we were going to go in there and shoot them up with something. And then uh, Vladimir Putin and uh, the Senator, Secretary of State Kerry got together and they uh, uh, horse collared a deal. Uh, and uh, so now uh, uh, President uh, Obama says, yeah, uh, we're going to vote on it, but not now. And maybe we can. So, and then everybody's saying, well, wait a minute. He's flip flopping. He's ambiguous. Uh, and and uh, he, uh, the country is weak. And Putin's now writing articles in the newspaper about what's the matter with America. Uh, but I'm thinking now, upon f further consideration, th that. Uh, Obama, this guy's so smart and so shrewd, he knows exactly what he's doing, and something good will come of this, and then he will be the hero. Whereas now, Putin's shooting off his mouth like a dope. Like a dope, like a, like a, like a dope. Like a dope. <laughs> exactly. Nice like nice a thing. dope. Yeah. It was, this is a uh, copy of the New York Times from uh, yesterday, and look, right in the middle there, uh, he's got a column. It's Vladimir Putin. And he, he's he, writing a column, writing for, the a column for the New York Times. He writes in and he says, by the way, let me, let me fax over a column. And they put it uh, in the Times here and he's just shooting off his mouth and he's telling us how we ought to lead our lives. And this is a commie. This is a former commie. This, this is the, the head of the Red Menace. This is the guy right here. He was part of the KGB. This is the guy that would put strontium-90 in your pudding. Remember those guys? Uh, yeah. yeah, and there's a way to how did the, the strontium 90 get in the pudding? Well, he's a, a red commie bastard. That's the problem. <laughs> Thank you. So, when, when I saw the paper, I said, you know who we should uh, talk to? Uh, we call, I called my friends at CBS News, and I said, let me talk to your chief foreign correspondent over there in London, Graham Fenwick Jones, who's been on the show many, many times, ah. a smart guy. Uh, full of insight and has seen it all. So turn on the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome to the show uh, CBS foreign correspondent Graham Fenwick Jones. Graham, good to see you. Thank you, Dave. Good evening. Now, um, I'm sure you had a chance to read the uh, op ed piece uh, written by Vladimir Putin in mm -hmm. uh, yesterday's Times. Tell us uh, what your reaction is and, and what the reaction of the rest of the world is to what Putin had to say in the New York Times. Mm. Well, Dave, every bloke from Biggleswade to Scunthorpe has been fluttering his dove cut about Putin throwing a wobbly. But before this, everything seems quids in, sound as a pan. But now he's over egged the pudding, hasn't he? Gone on the hairy heel uh, and turned a bloody stonk into basically bugger all. <laughs> um, Graham, what was the motivation? Why would Putin want to write this op-ed piece for the Times? Well, everyone was keen as mustard until that scatty skyver got out of his pram and off his trolley. But if it's all mouth and trousers, isn't it? A, a right damp squidder. And once he go, goes pear-shaped, well, everything will be as black as Newgate's knocker. <laughs> um, now, as I mentioned earlier, you've been in this business a long time. Yeah. You've seen it all. You've been everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you have met Vladimir Putin. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us... Uh, what is the man like when you're standing there next to him, looking at him eye to eye? What is Vladimir, what do you think of him? Well, Dave, to be honest with you, and off the record, 
He's a bit of a big girl's blouse. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But, but if he's the man I know and he chivies it along a bit and gives it some welly, then he can still grasp the nettle uh, and win back the man on the Chatham omnibus. But it's as plain as a pike staff. But if they go off their chump and faff about with all their cobblers and cods wallop, they'll be gone for a burden and, uh, of course, he'll end up as nobby no mates. All right, well, thank you very much, Graham. Yeah. It's always great to talk to you. Oh, thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. I'm off for a fill on money. Graham Fenwick Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The lovely, the talented Felicia Collins, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Paul. Yes, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the program. I, um, I don't know uh, whether I should be concerned. I think we've been through this many, many times oh. before in the history of this great republic. Yes. But they're talking about October 1st, the government is gone. Right. The, the money has Shut dried down. out. There would be a, the budget, there's a debt limit, there's a ceiling, there's a fiscal cliff. Remember the fiscal cliff? Ah, uh, yes. And we, we, for weeks, we tried to get him on the show. Yeah, couldn't get <laughs> fiscal cliff. He said, cliff, no, yeah. I'm, I'll be in Orlando. Yeah. Um, and now they're saying that they're, they're defunding the government. There'll be no money. It's uh, so confusing. So we're going to check in now via satellite all the way from London. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome CBS Chief Foreign Correspondent Graham Fenwick-Jones. Graham, there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, Hello. Dave. Good evening. Nice to see you. It uh, looks like a lovely night in London, and as always, thank uh -huh. you very much for your time, Graham. It seems like we go through this, uh, gosh, I don't know. We must have been through it before. Uh, but why are we facing... This possibility again. Oh, well, Dave, we've seen the Tories in a Barney Rubble over the price of custard and jelly, getting into a two and eight over every farthing and threepence, stropping over every farthing and two bob pit over the president's crumbs from the Lucy Lockett. And then what's the price of your bangers and mash and your toad in the hole? Uh, and how. Um... Give us the two sides of this. How, how are they approaching this dispute? Well, the, the Tories say the budget's on the never-never, uh, and they'll never agree to, the, the, to, to tell o Obama to get on his bike. But, but he's no vicar of Ray, and he'll tell him to budge off and chivy along. And, but, you know, if we, we stick it out and show him the old Dunkirk spirit, we can be a right royal and sound as a pound within the full night, and then we can bugger off down the apples and pears and have a bit of as your father. Yeah. Aha! And um, how will this affect the, what they call the debt ceiling and that crisis? What are, are they must be related? Well, if you ask me, it's as daft as a brush. And sure to come ah, a copy ah. if, if the Congress goes off of their chump and brings the coals to Newcastle. Yes. But if these blinkered sods don't open their lug holes and have a chin wag, you can bet the Queen's bubble and squeak, they'll end up <laughs> scrounging for fathers on Carey Street. And then what have you got with your rumply pumply and your meat and two veg? <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, uh, Grim. Uh, I certainly appreciate the insight. Chief Foreign Correspondent Graham Fenwick Jones. Uh, thank you, Dave. Aren't you the big girl's blouse? Thank you. I guess I am. Graham Fenwick Jones, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, that, I mean, clears everything up, doesn't it? Yeah. A guy like that, a few minutes with a guy like that, and you really feel stupid, don't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you so much, Alicia. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, we're so, we're so lucky here at uh, CBS. Whenever something happens that we don't fully understand that affects each and every one of us, yeah. we turn to the massive resource that is CBS News. And they said, whatever you need, Dave, please feel free to uh, access us. And so we do. Uh, and tonight the question is, the government shut down this week. Many people don't care because we're all fed up. Yeah. We're fed up ah. with what they've done to our government. It's not working the way it was supposed to work, thanks to a lot of goons, a lot of self-aggrandizing goons. This is... They shut it down. 
Uh, and, and if the, 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 the debt ceiling thing happens on October 17th, what's that going to do to Halloween? Yeah, I never looked at it. Yeah, well, of course you didn't. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, here to shed some light on this topic, uh, please welcome uh, CBS Chief Foreign Correspondent all the way from London. Turn on the satellite. Oh. It's Graham Fenwick Jones. Hi, oh, well, Mr. Jones. There he is, Graham Fenwick Quietly. Jones. Hello and good evening, Graham. Good to see you. Uh, I don't know uh, how this is being treated overseas. Maybe they don't care. But here in the United States, I sense that people are, are getting uh, frustrated, that they're getting fed up, that they're sick and tired of these uh, goings on in Washington. What, uh, what, who do you think is, should be held responsible for this shutdown? You know, Dave, word from Westminster said the Tories will end up Billy no mates over all the bollocks and the argy barges from every Burke and bomb up, every dozy, divvy, gormless, duffer, prat, wally, tosser, wanker, and every big girl's blouse and brought me to sit just loose to South North Ambridgeshire. Um, I, I get the feeling that people here in this country are worried about Obamacare, but they're in your home country. They, they've had uh, government-sponsored uh, health care since the 30s. Is there anything? Does that work over there, Grim? Oh, yes, Dave. I used it about a fortnight ago. Well, I get a bit of spotty in me knackers after a bit of rumply pumping <laughs> with this randy scout slapper whose bristles I caught a fancy to on the underground. That slag rode my chew from Barkingside, Amstead, for the transfer to the overground uh, at Shepherd's Bush. Um, do, do you see any way that the Republicans, we have the two parties here, the Republicans and the Democrats. Uh, Graham, uh, you're a man of uh, uh, the geopolitical scene. Do you see any way that two parties can resolve their mm. differences? Well, Dave, they should step back, skive off, head down to the local for a few pig's ears, maybe go to a knocking shop for a bit of quim on this from the scrubbers. And once they've bonded over some juicy minge, <laughs> they can find that they can, you know, muck in, <laughs> forget of all the moony <laughs> guff, and Bob's your uncle. It's all <laughs> the wobbly-bobbly and tickety boo. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Graham. I appreciate you. Yeah, it's Graham. a pleasure, Dave. I'm up for a supersonic. Yeah. Graham Fenwick Jones, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you. Take care over there. Thanks for staying up so late. Mm. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hello, and hi to you. How are you, Paul? Well, never better, David, and you? I'm fine. I'm concerned about these things that keep happening. Uh, we have, remember the sequester where everybody was sequestered? The sequester. Yeah, yeah. and then there was the debt ceiling. And then debt now ceiling. The, the government has uh, closed down, and then there was the fiscal cliff. Fiscal the cliff fiscal was cliff? a friend of mine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And now uh, the uh, debt ceiling, and uh, gosh, I wish I knew what this meant. I, I don't, I understand there's a debt, uh, and they have a ceiling on the debt, yeah. and uh, something will happen uh, October 17th to, to that ceiling. <laughs> and that's all I know. Well, doesn't really give us much. No. Uh, so uh, the, the great people at CBS News, uh, Scott Pelley and his uh, buddies, they are always calling up saying, Dave, we want to help you through this crisis. If you, if you need our services, if there's anything we can do by way of helping uh, to educate you or your viewing audience. And I said, great. And they said, tonight, for example, we, we have some time with our uh, CBS chief, uh, CBS News chief foreign correspondent in London, mm. a gentleman I think you met at the upfronts a few years ago. Oh, oh, I know who you're talking yeah. about. Graham Fenwick Jones. Yeah, he's a lovely, a lovely guy, yeah, so actually, yeah. He will help you explain whatever questions you might have about the fiscal cliff, the debt crisis, the debt ceiling, the shutdown, whatever. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's turn on the massive, powerful, emitting huge radiation CBS satellite. Okay. Here he is, all the way from London, the chief uh, foreign correspondent, Graham Fenwick Jones. Good evening, uh, Graham. Thank you very much. Uh, Graham, uh, help me out here. What do I need to know about this uh, debt ceiling? It's kind of confusing. It's an unusual concept, or is it an unusual concept? What exactly is it? 
Well, well, the Tories are going balmy over every shillings and sixpence in Her Majesty's treasury. Uh, honestly, I know my own well enough to explain the, uh, to the man on the Clapham Omnibus or Joe Bloggs, but not to some dozy septic tank club up of supper for yourself, you know, who would be in a right too late to find his plunker in his undercrackers in uh, you have a Jimmy Riddle, you, you big girl's blouse. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, there you go. It looks like um, it looks like the Republicans, from what I inferred today, are starting to show some weakness. And do you think that they will uh, acquiesce now? Dave, the Tories are scuppering their chances and spoiling the ship for a hape of the tar. But the way you're banging on about all that bosh and bobbins, I'll say you're a bit of a gormless twerp. And haven't got a bleeding idea what I'm on about, you bardy bardy old raggy gadgy. And, and so long as I keep up with all the rabbit and pork, well, we'll be happy as Larry and have a giraffe to see a pudding crawl. Um, now, um, what, what about a, a, a settlement? Can we, will something happen? Will there be a settlement, an agreement before that happens? Well, a default is as likely as a bottle of chips, and we can do subtle for anyone. But anyway, I can't be bugging around all night with some half sharp bum stick. I've got a, some scrumpy Bobby Dazzle of a shag bag with some stonking Charlies as keen as mustard for a bit of slap and tickle. So I'm going to skive off before I queer my pitch and end up bashing the bishop. How's the family? Ah. <laughs> On your bike. Your Berkshire hunt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens uh, then. Thank you. Graham Fenwick Jones, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, thank you, Barry. He's drunk, right? Well, no, no. He's not drunk. This is the way he was at the upfront, so and he made perfect sense back then. But there's a delay, I think. There's satellite. Well, there's satellite delay. Maybe that's what's yeah. confusing. Ladies and gentlemen, here's tonight's top ten. Uh, you, you know what I did, and I'm, I, maybe I shouldn't be doing this, but uh, you know CBS News. It's a, a vast worldwide uh, news, news gathering organization, and, and a guy called me the other day, and he said, Dave, anytime we can help you, and I, I knew that he wasn't serious, but I, <laughs> I called him today and I said, can we have somebody, one of your top guys, tell us about the government shutdown and then the reopening and what does it mean, and then yeah. in February it's going to happen again, and what are we talking about in the debt ceiling? And he said, we'll, we'll put you in touch with our foreign, chief foreign correspondent, uh, Graham Fenwick-Jones. Turn on the uh, CBS satellite. Here he is tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Graham Fenwick-Jones, CBS chief foreign correspondent. Good evening, Graham. Good evening, Diane. Uh, tell me what you know. I mean, from my perspective, it's just been weeks of uh, chaos. Does it mean anything now that the government is back in business? We're going to go through it again. What is your take on all of this? Well, I'm afraid not, Dave. The shutdown plan failed and the Tories have got bog all of uh, this pony and trap while Obama uh, got the whole block and tackle. So the people uh, should give the MPs a bit of stick. Now they've gone for a Burton and when the election comes around, the voters will tell them they're bang out of order and say, bugger that for a game of soldiers. <laughs> now, um, would you explain to me how the two... And if they, in fact, did come to an agreement, how did they finally reach the agreement? And, and why now? Why not uh, two weeks ago? Well, ultimately, they had to listen to the people, didn't they? The Tories had gone dagging them, and the polls showed they were about as popular as a Grogan on the tube. But now they've ended up with Joe Soap, and, well, even a big girl's blouse such as yourself could see that they've lost the plot and should go for an early bath before they completely go off their chump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
And we're, are we going to, is this the way of the, the future? Is this the kind of thing we're going to continue to see this uh, gridlock, Graham? Well, it's hard to tell, Dave. This party's gone pear-shaped, and now they've made a dog's dinner of the whole thing. It's, it's going to be hard cheese for every Tory MP from Hemley-on-Thames to Sudbury to Nottinghamshire. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going out to get one over the aid and, and pull off for a fresh slag to uh, toodle my pip. All right, well, thank you very much, uh, Graham Fenwick. Jones, you've been very helpful, Graham. Thank you. We'll be... We'll be right back with Barbara Walters, Graham. Thank you. So much. Oh, what a pleasure it is. Oh, what a pleasure it is oh, to see it is you. Oh, it's our pleasure. Hi, and happy Thanksgiving. Oh, and, and thank you. And you are the first. You are the first. Thank you very much. Yes, I, I, on behalf of Paul and myself and the entire staff, men and women who bring you The Late Show each and every night, we'd like to be the very first to yes. wish you and yours a happy Thanksgiving. Yes, we're the first. We are. Now, we are the first. We That's are right. The we first. are the first. We are the first. And you know how sometimes you get drowsy after a big turkey dinner? What is that from? The tryptophan? It's the tryptophan. They yeah, say yeah. it makes you a Everybody little likes sleepy. To talk about There's that. a way to overcome that, and uh, Martha Stewart, I think, introduced it to What does she do? She adds, before she puts the, you stuff the turkey, yes. and before you slide it into the oven, uh -huh. you just add a tablespoon of crack. <laughs> just a tablespoon of crack. <laughs> Tablespoon of crack. <laughs> uh, controversy. I'm so sick and tired of controversy. Aren't you, ladies and gentlemen, sick and tired of controversy? What? You know, if you're embroiled in a controversy, this is what everybody forgets when they're in the middle of a controversy. Yeah. We're all going to be dead soon. That's so right. Why are we in a controversy? Why, bother? Why are we wasting our time? Why bother I don't care car? whether you're 20, whether you're 40, Doesn't whether matter. you're 60, whether yeah, you're 80. I don't care. Forget a controversy That's because right. you know why? We're all going to be dead. Forget a controversy. Forget, Forget a controversy. Con controversy. And, you're, yeah. and you'd be laying there thinking, holy crap, I wasted all why that time did I on a controversy. Yeah, why, why? What was so important? I should have been watching TV. Yeah, that's what. Uh, anyway, controversy about the agreement we just made with Iran oh, to uh, restrict their uh, nuclear uh, program. That's a big controversy. I, I couldn't remember how to mispronounce it. Nuclear. I know, how, yeah. He used to say nuclear. That's how Bush used to say it. It's a very complicated issue. Here now to explain uh, the new uh, nuclear agreement mm -hmm. with Iran is uh, CBS. I called CBS and I said, hey, what's going on, boys? And they said, I'll tell you what, we'll put you in touch with our foreign correspondent. He's in London. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, here he is now. Graham Fenwick Jones. Ah. Say hello and uh, welcome. <laughs> Graham, nice to see you. Welcome. Thank you very much for your time. Hello and good evening, Dave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looks like a pleasant evening there in London. About what time is it, uh, Mr. Jones? Oh, uh, it's getting on towards, um, let's see, what time is it here? Oh, it's 10 ish, I suspect, Dave. <laughs> <You know? laughs> You know, you know, Graham, I don't want to embarrass you, but there's a giant clock over your left shoulder. Oh. <laughs> but let's, let's leave that for another show. Um, what, uh, how did we manage to negotiate this deal with Iran? <laughs> well... Oh, Dave, the Secretary of State, John Kerry, went to Geneva to have a chinwag with the Iranians. And after the yonks of effort, they went up to the pictures and made it seem like a wet lettuce. The old wrinkly claims he's pulled up his daisy ropes, grasped the nettle and secured a double of a deal that will have Iran binning their bonds by Boxing Day. Well, well, I think we'll all look forward to that, I know. Uh -huh. Now, um... But not everybody's pleased with the agreement, uh, Graham. Uh, many people are very critical of it. Can you can tell us why? 
Well, yes, the parents are throwing a Benny, saying the president's got hat stand with his tooth and his tosh and his tongue and his tummy rot. And if the whole thing goes squiffy and pear-shaped, you can bet your under crackers the Tories will be calling for their wigs on the green with Obama saying, <laughs> uh, same to you with knobs on, mate. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Do you think Iran will uh, honor their side of the agreement? Well, like buggery, they will, Dave. <laughs> well, they're all mouth and trousers, aren't they? And we can take a shifty in their cellar every fortnight from now until the coronation's day. But uh, we can still hardly enough uranium in the desert to cobble dogs with. I wouldn't trust them any more than I'd trust a scouser to put on a johnny before tapping his widgie me sister to stop her getting up the spout. Doing, doing, I'm sorry, doing, doing what with your sister? Uh, what? <laughs> Tapping is widgy, don't you? <laughs> See? Well, now, now listen, uh, Graham, thank you very much as always. And uh, what, are, what are your plans for Thanksgiving? Um, not a lot. <laughs> okay. And I, I kind of understand that. Now, thank you very much. And we'll see you soon, ladies and gentlemen. Graham Fenwick Jones. CBS <laughs> Chief Correspondent. That's all. Okay. You're twirly tossed, man. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, Josh Hutcherson will join us from the Catching Fire movie. Tired of Thanksgiving dinner full of awkward silences? This year, why not take turns reading from the hilarious new book, This Land Was Made For You And Me But Mostly Me, by Bruce McCall and Dave Letterman. Your whole family will be begging for seconds. Buy them by the fistful. Finally, world peace in book form. Nominated again this year, Golden Globe, oh, yeah. Best Late Night Talk Show Band. I'd like to thank the Best Academy. Best Band in America. Thank you. You know, uh, we've been keeping a close eye on the uh, economy because uh, one day we have no money, uh, then the next day we have a little bit more money, then all of a sudden the Chinese have everything. They, they, <laughs> they, they own everything, they do everything, and we have nothing, and, and, and now things are improving a little bit. But I said to the folks at CBS News, I said, can we get get somebody to talk to us tonight about give us a global perspective on the economy especially right in the middle of the holiday season so they said sure how about our uh, CBS chief foreign correspondent Graham Fenwick Jones he's oh, here yeah. tonight ladies and gentlemen good. turn on the satellite here's Graham Fenwick Jones all the way from London thank you very much uh, for being with us tonight uh, Graham always a pleasure to have you as part of the show how are you doing my friend well hello and good evening Dave mm -hmm. thank you now, um, Christmas is uh, a couple of weeks away. How, how is the shopping season looking to you? Well, Dave, retailers say it's shaping up to be a cracking season. Every shop is full of pikies and punters going off their onions to get their manky mitts on every poxy piece of plastic rubbish for their, their dustbin lids to open over their mince pies and Christmas porridge. Yeah, yeah right. Now, what... Uh, what about the sluggish economy? How is that affecting the holiday season? <laughs> well, the fact is that everybody's minding their shillings and pence because everyone's feeling a bit brassic. You know, more people are uh, quietly celebrating at home on their Jack Jones, loading up on the sherry and the suet for a, a squiffy Christmas pudding and getting blinkered bladdered on wobbly pop while waiting for Father Christmas to fly in with the bits of odds and sods for the sprogs and the nippers. Uh, sprogs and nippers, sure. Now, um, <laughs> are, are the stores there in uh, London, are, are they as packed as they are here in uh, New York City? Well, they probably are, Dave, but I haven't got a didgeridoo. Yeah. I went round the shops to have a butcher's the other day, but I got a bit distracted by a bit of crumpet in the perfume department. She asked me to take me to the trouser department and give me a right royal scene to between the Christmas undercrackers and the whistles and flumes. <laughs> Well, uh, that's great. Thank you very much for the insight, Graham. And what are your uh, plans for Christmas? Well, Dave, I'm of the Jewish faith, you tossing twonk. Uh-huh. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Graham Fenwick-Jones, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen.
That guy, I love uh, that guy. What what the stories that man oh, could tell? Oh, I can only imagine. You, you met him one year at the upfronts, right? Well, that was that was funny. He was funny there. Yeah. Very there you go. That's exactly right. Thank you very much, Paul. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, like I need to tell you, the Super Bowl is this weekend. And here now, with some perfect analysis on the big game, please welcome CBS Chief Foreign Correspondent Graham Fenwick Jones. Turn on the thing. Here's Graham Fenwick Jones right there, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, uh, Graham. Thank you very much for being with us here tonight. Good evening, Dave. How are they hanging? Yeah. Now, um, uh, Graham, who do you think will win the big game on Sunday? Will it be Seattle or will it be Denver? Well, Dave, they've both had a tremendous season, but I believe the Broncos are stone bonkered safe as as is. And I've waged a lot of wonder on it because it's money for old rope, isn't it? Although if Denver go pear-shaped and I can't stump up with a spondulix, some yobbos will sort me air, stick one on me, give my loaf a tonking, stove my boat in. Well. Now, um, there has been some discussion about the weather on Sunday. Is there any chance the cold weather will affect the game? Well, you know what they say about the weather, Dave. Well, it'll be a bit tight as the brass monkeys may leave the Nash players a bit shrammed. But your sausage fingers should be well insulated and able to keep cramming your stodgy dogs into your north and south. Yeah. Now, um, am I wrong about this, or, or do people in your country uh, enjoy American football? It's, it's mostly uh, the, uh, the other football, which is soccer, but do they care about American football? Oh. Oh, yes, Dave, yes, I do, and that's a load of old bullocks, is it? On Super Bowl Sunday, every bloke heads into the local, gets squiffy pissed on wobbly pop, and then go out on the pool for a bit of slap and tickle with whatever blurt seems worth a squirt, Dave. Yeah, okay, well, that's been very helpful, Graham. And, uh, by the way, we're having a party at the house. You're always welcome. You want to come on over? Well, to be honest, Dave, I'd rather have my knob and my ghoulies yanked out of my Allen, stuffed in my lug holes and pulled out of my laughing gear. You scrutty tossbag. <laughs> Graham Fenwick Jones, ladies and gentlemen, CBS Chief Foreign Correspondent. Wow, he's good, isn't he? He puts a, a really a, a slant yeah, on it. Yeah, you really things, get, you get another perspective that uh, heretofore we did not uh, We did not have. No, no. that's right. Goodness, thank you very much, Paul. That was Will Lee on the vocal. Will Lee, nice going, my friend. Listen, uh, it's all about the Olympics, and you can't help but get ah. caught up because oh. it's all of these uh, kids ah. representing our country yes. uh, against the uh, rest of the world. Right. Uh, and I, I want to tell you something. Uh, uh, there is no off. Now listen to this. Well. There is no off position on the genius switch. What now listen. You say? I'll, I'll tell you what I'm thinking about. I was uh, watching the Olympics last night, and you get uh, in an agitated state, and you can't sleep mm. because mm -hmm. the Olympics are exciting. Ah. They're just exciting. Yeah. And it's and it's events you don't. You, you don't know about, you're not familiar with. What do you mean? Well, like bobsledding. Do you see much bobsledding? Well, no, but we know we've seen it for many years. Yeah, but you only see it like once every four years. It's once. not like a guy will have one parked out front of no, your place. No, it's true. No, I understand. It's true. Yes. But you, you can't help yourself. Yeah. You get excited. And yeah. even with the curling, people curling. mock the curling. They make fun of the curling. Right. You still watch it. I yeah. mean, it's sure. Is it, is it just shuffleboard? Yes, it's just well, it's shuffleboard. It's basically shuffleboard, yes. But it's, it's exciting and you can't yeah. help yourself. Okay. And so because I'm always thinking about stuff, and, and I want to try and get this off the ground. Okay. What, what's the most popular attraction of the Summer Olympics, huh, Paul? Most summer, summer Olympics? Summer Olympics. Most Pole vaulting. No. It would... <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
I love pole vaulting, but no, the, the thing that everybody really loves in the Summer Olympics, and that, that would be, take another one. Well, it's a track, track and field. <coughs> I that, don't know. No, they, you know, when you jump in the sea, the shot put. That's right. Shot put? Swimming. Oh. Swimming. All right. Swimming. Well, I know. I like swimming. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I like swimming. What the Winter Olympics needs and needs desperately and soon is something that I would call ice cold swimming. Oh, I, <laughs> ice cold swimming. Ice cold swimming. Yes. Now I see what you're thinking. I, That's I see right. where you're going with this. I like <laughs> I like the way you think. Where the water is really really cold. Frigid cold water. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. And then so, everybody just gets cramps and, and stuff in there. <laughs> well, I don't know. That sounds it's like not up to me. I just okay. came up with the idea. All right, ice cold sir. You know, uh, because uh, it's such an international event, we sent, uh, you know, Graham Fenwick Jones. I love C this guy. Yeah, he's CBS, the British uh, comic. chief cor uh, correspondent. He is now in Sochi covering the Olympics for us. Let's turn on the CBS satellite, ladies and gentlemen. Say hello to Graham Fenwick Jones. There he is right there. Hi, Graham. Nice to see you. Thank you very much for helping out. How are things going in Sochi? Hello, and good evening, Dave. Uh -huh. uh, now, uh, in your opinion, what has been the big moment of these Olympics? Well, Dave, it's been quite a fortnight in Sochi. There were the high hopes for Sean White before he, he went from Jack the Lad to Joe Soap. And then Bodie Miller did a Devon lock. But of course, the US hockey team pipped Russia at the post while a scundered Vladimir Putin threw a bit of a wobbler in the stands. Yeah. <laughs> now, um... There's a lot of talk about the facilities, the infrastructure of the Olympics not being ready. Do, do things seem that bad to you? Well, it's all been a bit of a dog's breakfast, Dave. While we're stuck at the hotel getting a dreaded lurgy off the whiffy water that gives us all the nasty squitters, Putin's playing silly buggers, cocking a snook at any uphill gardener who might be having a butcher's look at his jacksy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and have you met any of the uh, Olympians, any of the athletes? Well, I'd like to have got a grip of something, Dave, but they're all too busy knobbing each other silly. What? Everywhere you look, it's throdging todgers and bulging bollocks and more quim and heavy charlies than all the knocking shops in London. Graham Fenwick Jones, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Graham. Good to see you. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back with your Olympic champions, Josh Christensen, Gus Kenworthy, and Nick Gepper. Thank you so much. the shape tone, everybody. You know, the World Cup is on Sunday, and uh, it, it really has, has taken the, the U.S. by storm and the United States uh, team doing so well and the competition being so fierce and fascinating to watch. We thought we would now... Uh, CBS said uh, we have our chief foreign correspondent in, uh, I think, Rio. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to talk to him about uh, what's going on in Brazil and the World Cup. Uh, so we're going to do that right now. Turn on the, uh, the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome CBS chief foreign correspondent, Graham Fenwick-Jones. Hi, Graham. How are you? Good evening, uh, Graham. Thank you. Uh, Good very, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for uh, joining us here tonight, Graham. Thank you and good evening, Diane. Yeah. How? Uh, tell us about the mood there uh, now that, especially now that the United States and uh, home uh, team country uh, Brazil have been eliminated from the tournament. What, what are things going on in Brazil like? Well, they're all gutted since Germany put the mockers on Brazil's World Cup hopes. And the Brazilians are dischaffed at the right pasting they took. But the Jerrys are jumped up, strutting about like Lord Muck, because they think it'll be easy peasy. And come Sunday, it'll be Bob's your uncle. Mm. <laughs> um, now, uh, Graham, uh, we know that uh, uh, Germany is advancing to the final. We don't know its opponent yet. What, what will your prediction be for the final game? 
Well, I think the lowlanders have it, you know, Dave. I am. Um, and, and it'll be, uh, you know, don't cry for me, Argentina. <laughs> but, you know, I'll be watching on the local while I'm on the pull for a squiffy, piss Brazilian slag, seeking comfort in a few pig's ears, and a, and a bit of slap or tickle in the back of my Volkswagen shagging wagon until the cows come home. <laughs> Graham, Graham, how long have you been with CBS? <laughs> well, Dave, who knows? I, mean, yeah, I don't know. It's been a while. I just can't remember yeah. these sort of things. Now, uh, do you think that uh, Americans are now finally embracing the soccer? Gordon Bennett, Dave. The word cares on all about what you podgy prats watch while hoovering your dogs into your manky north and south. Mm -hmm. Now, now, if you're done piddling about, the old chap sees a bit of spare with capital yongs, who, who looks a bit keen for a tapping, and then, then I'll be in the pink, Dave. Tickety-boo. Well, Graham, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed talking with you this evening. Thank you for all the insight. <clears throat> Bug off, you lazy lob. Thank you very much. Graham Fenwick-Jones, ladies and gentlemen, from Rio de Janeiro. We'll be right back with Paul Morrissey.